If you caught the last episode where we talked about creating resources to handle items in our inventory, you would know that we now have a system where we can have our items that spawn directly in our hand. And if I want to change them, all I need is another resource to actually do that. And the same position, rotation, everything else that I'll need for that item can all be stored in one single file. But the problem with this system is we can only have one item in at one time because we just have a single item resource being defined. The first thing that we're going to want to consider is that we're going to want to hold probably more than one, potentially three, five, seven, who knows how many items we want to have in our immediate scroll bar to start switching to. But we do want to make sure that it only will ever hold our items. The way that we're going to make that happen is by creating an array. And we're going to make sure that that array only can hold our items. So once again, we'll do an export variable just to allow me to easily throw my resources in there. And instead of calling it item array or something else, I'm going to call this my inventory array. Just that gives me the easiest way to include a lot of things in this without having to think too hard. And then for this, we're just going to call this an array. So let it know that we want an array. But rather than an array of everything, we can do an array of just items. We want to make sure that this array can hold whatever we put in it as long as it's an item. And that's going to be my blaster, my whisk, or anything that inherits item will fall under this as well. And we'll just instantiate that here. So now inside of my player character, we have our inventory array. Right now it's a size zero, but we're gonna be able to add things to it. So let's say we wanna add those two items we already have. Maybe we'll start off with that blaster, then we'll go down to our whisk. So now both of those resources are stored there and we're gonna be able to do things with it. One of the other things we'll need to future-proof with here is setting a way for us to actually access this array because we're gonna to want to be able to get into any single index of it. So we'll create a new variable that's just called my inventory index. And this is going to start off being equal to zero because arrays start at zero and go all the way up. This way, we're going to have this inventory array. It's going to pick the very first thing in it, which will be, in our case, our blaster. Before we go any further as well, since we already have our inventory array that's holding all of our items, and we're going to get our index of that array to grab one of them, we don't actually need to define our item at the top level. So we can remove our export from this. And we'll just lump it in with the rest of them. So now we've lost our item selection over here because they're all being stored in the array. And that just means that we can then set our item to equal the inventory array. And we can use our inventory index. At this point, it would take that inventory array that has blaster in our whisk. We have our inventory index equal to zero. So now... If instead of loading our whisk, it's going to load the blaster. If we set that inventory index to one, it would then load our whisk. Before we get any further, be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss any future updates. And this is all well and good because we would want to be able to change it without having to come in here every single time, but we need some way to affect our inventory index. The easiest way, and like most games do, is we have our scroll inputs bound that are allowing us to go through. The first thing we'll have to do for this is go into our project settings, go into our input map, and we're gonna add a new action. I'll say scroll forward, and we're gonna add one for scroll backward, because that's gonna say pushing our mouse forward or scrolling it back towards us. And then we can set it to our mouse buttons. We're gonna wanna do mouse wheel up for scroll forward, and we'll do a mouse wheel back for back. So now as we're scrolling forward and back, this is an input that we can leverage here in just a second. And I also like to do this in its own function just to make it easier to identify. So I'll just create a new function here. We're gonna say my inventory scroll. 
And inside of this, we're gonna just check to make sure if it's gonna be scrolling up, we're gonna do something, or if it's scrolling down, we're gonna do something. So if our input dot is action just released, because we wanna check that we've actually pushed it forward, and we're gonna say is scroll forward, what are we gonna do for that? We're gonna take our inventory index, and we're going to want to make sure that this is going to be able to be added to or removed from without going out of the bounds of our array. Because we keep scrolling up and up and up, we might get to three or 300. And we want to make sure that we can actually call something. So we're going to use the wrap command. So we're going to wrap. We're going to wrap our inventory index. We're going to subtract one from it. Our wrap is going to be between zero because that's our first element or first index in our array. And it's going to be a maximum of our inventory array dot size. So we can go between zero and the size of our inventory array. But if we go above inventory array dot size, we reset back to zero and then vice versa on the other way. And after we've done this, we'll want to call that load item function again, because if we scroll forward, we want the other item to load. We'll create the exact same if statement for our other direction. So we're going to scroll backward. And in, rather than minusing one, we will plus one here. So now scrolling forward will move us further in the array and then scrolling backwards will bring us the other direction. And then once we've done that, we are going to load our item. From here, we'll go up to our input function and we'll just add our inventory scroll function to that. So now every time there's an input, it's just gonna check and allow us to do that. So if we go into the game here, we can start scrolling and we just have two things here. It's going to load the other one, but unfortunately, the previous model still load. So theoretically, if I spin my mouse forever, every single time it's going to add an additional child. So if we go to our remote here, we go to our test world, player character, we expand out that neck, we get all the way down to our item spawn. We have a lot of actual nodes spawned because we're not deleting them. So what we need to do then is inside of the load item function, we need to make sure that there's some sort of logic that says, if there is a child, get rid of it, and then continue on with everything else. So after we set our inventory array at the inventory index to our item variable, so once we have our item defined, we'll wanna make sure that everything inside of our item spawn is removed. So to do that, we'll use the for loop. So we're gonna say for i in, and we'll grab our item spawn once again. And for that, we're going to get all of the children. And that's gonna create an array from everything that's a child for our item spawn, loop through every single child, and we are going to do something. And that's something that we're gonna do is we'll grab the item spawn once again. After we use it three times, I typically like to make a new variable for it but we'll pause on that one last time. And we're going to remove our child at that I position. So if we detect a child at position zero, we're then gonna run through, delete that child. And that should be everything we need here to switch between our items. The real benefit of this is if I go and create a bunch more items down here in my folder, that now all I have to do to add them to my player's inventory is go to my player character. We have our array, we can add additional elements and I'll grab my frying pan and grab my second blaster that I've added. So now inside of this, we start with our blaster, we go to the whisk, we go to frying pan, we go to the other blaster, which I need to fix the rotation for. And then since we use that wrap, it's going to wrap right around. So we can infinitely scroll through all of the items that we have, and we have a nice inventory array to do that.